Hello everyone, we're going to continue our HTML5 project. We've seen that once we add an image to our art screen, the image is a bit larger than the container that it's supposed to be in. Well, we can style this through CSS, and that's the preferred method, because instead of resizing each picture, uh, we want to add some CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, so that every picture we target changes with one command. So in our case here, we've got this picture. In our index.html file, that picture is found under line 109. It's a picture, we didn't define any size, but we want to use some CSS to define the size. And here's how we'll do it. At the top of our document, we have a reference to, on line 13, link, rel, stylesheet, href, codica.ext.css. So this is a stylesheet, it's an external stylesheet. So it's pointing to a file in our folder where we can write all of our CSS rules. And this is the recommended method, an external style sheet, so that all your CSS rules are in one location, easy to find, easy to edit, and then that one file is linkable to all of your files so that they are consistent. So if you look inside of the project folder, you'll see the index file, which includes all of our pages up to this point, the directions file, which included the brand new geolocation that we added, and then two files that came from Kodika when we downloaded our project. One is for our extra CSS stuff, and one is for extra JavaScript stuff, extra or external. Let's go ahead and open that kodika.ext.css in Notepad, and it says put your custom CSS here. So we're going to write some CSS to target the size of our images. Uh, and there are three types of CSS rules, basically. And this is just for your information. You don't have to write this. But there's a tag, there's a class, and there's an ID. A tag changes the look of an existing HTML tag. So for example, we could say h1 color red. What that would do is change all of our heading ones throughout the whole document, throughout the whole project, to have a text color of red. Classes change the look of any other element. And these are, these are unique so I can create a class called my image and then say its color is pink. So the text color uh, of this particular image is pink. Or actually what would make more sense is the background color of this image would be pink. And then finally, an ID also changes the look of any other element. But the big difference is, going back to class, can be used multiple times per project, per page. And ID can only be used once. Per page. So the way that's differentiated is with a pound symbol, and that would be called an image background color yellow. And that's differentiated class with a dot. So tags just have the tag name itself and then we add properties so we can even have something like body notice I do a curly brace close curly brace and I could say here um, padding 25 px so I simply say the name of the tag with a class I have to add a dot 
So here we could say uh, left, um, left uh, image, and set its uh, properties, margin 100px pixels. And then an ID has the pound symbol. And we can do um, top nav. Top nav, we can say, and I apologize for this, I'm used to writing a semicolon at the end, but that does not need the semicolons. The semicolons are only after the property, not the end of the curly brace. Force of habit. Top nav, we could say um, right margin 25, 250px, semicolon. So those are the three types of CSS rules. Um, tags, classes, and IDs. For what we want, I'm going to remove all of this. For what we want, it would make sense that since we put an image onto the onto the document, uh, we could write image, curly brace, and curly brace, and we could say um, with colon 100%, semicolon. So if we refresh our project, our image is 100% the size of the document. Very cool. However, notice if we go back to the home screen, there's an image there too, and now that has stretched out and gotten very weird, because the rule that we created is actually too generic. This is saying any image in the whole project make it with 100%. So instead, we want to create a class so that we can target specific elements. So let's change this. We'll say dot, uh, we'll do med image, medium image. These names can be anything you want. You can spell it out. You can add capitalization, etc. The only thing is you want to be consistent and you want to remember what you wrote. So here we have to have the dot. We give it a name. I just invented one, med image. And let's spell it out. Medium image. Medium sized image. And we're saying it's with maybe not 100%. We'll do, just to see how it looks, 75%. Save that. Now, if I go back and refresh, my original image on the home screen goes back to normal because that rule is not targeting it. Great. But now the image goes back to normal because that rule is not directly targeting it yet. We need to, in a sense, connect the medium image uh, CSS rule with that particular image. All right, back to our code, this time back to our index HTML file. Uh, let's find that image again. Here it is. Line 109, we've defined the source, but now we need to connect that CSS rule with this image. Since we just created a class, we say class equals quote, end quote, and then the name of the rule we created, uh, medium image. Now notice a few different things here. We do not add the period inside of the quotes. The period denotes that it's a class, but in the HTML, the word class is visible. All right, so now let's test it. And there we go. The image is not taking up 100% of the screen because we said anything that is tagged with the CSS rule, medium image, is only 75% the width of the screen the width of its container, technically. And that's what we have here. Class equals medium image. Medium image is defined in our external CSS file. We can do other things. We can say, uh, after the semicolon, we can say border colon 
and we can say um, this is going to be now I always forget this but I believe it's first um, what type of order what size and what color it might be backwards we'll check just to make it obvious what I'm trying to do here is add a border to our picture there we go so see now there's a big thick black border so I've said border colon solid now we have different types of, of borders we have dotted dashed etc I went with solid how thick to make the border to make it really obvious I made it to 10 pixels all the way around and then what color I did black let me put it back to something a little bit uh, a little bit better one pixel so now we have a one pixel border so I'm editing my picture via CSS I created a brand new class this Kodika extra file is linked to the index file therefore it obeys those rules and it only affects this image because in line 109 I said class equals the name of the class and then it pays attention so here we're getting a glimpse of the power of CSS because let's say we had 10 more pictures all we would need to do is add class equals medium image to those 10 pictures once that is done we change the medium image tag one time save and then all 10 pictures inherit the change so that's very cool CSS can be used to style just about anything in the document and that's what we'll need to do on our next video when we want to fix this it's cutting off the name of our project how do we fix that CSS to the rescue so let's check our next video